Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's Duckville here, gonna bring you some Heart of the Swarm action this time. It is going to be on Akalon Waste. This was a replay that was featured on, uh, it was on Reddit for a little while and, and a lot of people's, well, actually not a lot of people's, kind of surprising the, uh, the quality of this game and then, uh, not, not too many people are actually commenting on it. I suppose a lot of people saw it on the stream of one of the players, one of those players being our Red Terran up at the top left hand side here. He's under the banner of T Funk. But we all know that this is actually Thorzane from Team Evil Geniuses. And his opponent down in the bottom right hand side is our Blue Zerg player who uh, is playing under Startail. It, his name is Zero. It's not the Zero from Brood War in the Wung Jin Stars team. Uh, unfortunate as that is considering that I, I had a look at Zero's, um, his Liquipedia today. Uh, the, the actual Brood War Zero, and he has the funniest, uh, profile picture. You should go and look it up. It's like he was posing for some, uh, like, you know, online dating service, and he's in this sort of, you know, um, very luxurious pose. It's, it's really very cute. He looks like he should be saying something like, Hey baby, come to my hatchery, and, uh, we'll talk about lava injections or something like that. Anyway, um... Yeah, uh, as uh, as I'm sure you guys know, if you may have uh, you may have seen this on in, on other channels, or, or you may have uh, you may have seen it when it was live streaming, or you may have had a look at the replay yourself. It is a very long game, so of course stick around for the ride. I have uh, sort of had to position myself properly for a long game. Sometimes when you sit here and you cast a short game, you can sort of just like. You know, you know how when you're playing, it gets really awkward sometimes if you don't sit in like this perfect position and your legs get, uh, you know, sort of sore from sitting on them. If you're one of those people who sits on their legs or whatever, um, so I had to make sure I'm sitting right because I know this is a very, very long game. Now, part of the reason that I am casting this one, of course, apart from the fact that it is a very long game, and and I'm sure as everyone knows, if you've been following my content for quite a while, I love casting longer games. I I don't care if you've got a two-hour game, send it through. I will cast the hell out of that replay, and because uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting, fun dynamics that come out of a a long game that you don't always see in sort of the, the more standard sort of 15 to 20 minute games. So um, uh, that's that's part of the reason. The other reason is that given that we do have Thorzane, he's actually can, since I started playing Terran a lot. Now that I'm I'm sort of a mix of a Terran and a Protoss player, Thorzane's one of the people that I love to watch just because he plays a style that I kind of like to play myself with a very sort of slow, totally mechanical style that uh, sort of favors being, you know, much much more the, the slow but steady wins the race kind of uh, idea about, or that, or that kind of mantra about playing the game. So it is always good to see Thorzane playing and just, uh, well, you know, we'll see how he goes in this one. Of course, we do have Zero getting his, his expansion down. Does have his gas coming out pretty quickly, so he is going to pick up that Ling speed straight away. Going to give himself some good map control with the first few Lings to pop out, but he will be grabbing quite a few drones before that goes up, not to mention a few queens as well. Akalon Waste is the map today. Of course, this is uh, it has some interesting features. You got a, a pretty big uh, front door ramp there. Of course, the destructible rocks at the what is sort of a back door ramp, but they actually lead down to an expansion, which can be used as your third base. Of course, in Heart of the Swarm, it's a little bit different to the Wings of Liberty version of this map, where there is a destructible rock tower here. Only 500 hit points, but you drop that down, leaves a, uh, a big mess of old rocks there, and unless you've got some sort of uh, a bulldozer to clear all of that up, you're going to have a hard time getting through in the early part of the game. So it does, uh, it does give away for... Uh, mainly Terran and Protoss. I don't want to say Zerg because even even in the, the Heart of the Swarm version where you do have the rocks here, a lot of Zergs still tend to favor this base because it's much easier to get down to. You don't have to clear rocks to make sure that it's safe. And, um, you know, because of course, Z Zerglings right at the start don't actually do that much damage unless you've got uh, quite a lot of them. And uh, you don't really want to be committing that sort of amount of units to uh, an early destructible rock bus, which last I heard is not the best kind of strategy to use. But Thorzane is going to be going for what looks to be a pretty standard opening. We've got the reactor on the factory here, going to bring us out a couple of uh, Hellions right at the start. Does he have a armory going down? Not just as of yet. We're still waiting for that. Of course, Heart of the Swarm, one of the uh, most prevalent sort of strategies that Terran players like to use is a lot of Hellions. Of course, they do a brilliant job in... Um, 
Taking down the early units of the Zerg, of course, most of the early units that Zerg have are light. Of course, uh, if you get a couple of Hellbats in the, mineral, in the mineral line, you're gonna have a very bad time, and it looks like Zero gonna take advantage of uh, the very low presence of units right at the start from Thorzane, is gonna bust inside, takes down the uh, bunker, and of course the Marine that was inside of that. But it looks like with four Hellions out, Thorzane should be okay, disposes of those that get inside the main base, and uh, well, it looks like he will drive them out for the time being, but unfortunately, he has has suffered a couple of worker losses here. So Zero just uh, really just asserting his dominance there right at the start with a uh, with a very quick attack. Of course, that's a quite an interesting feature that uh, a lot of the, the Star Tail Zerg players, particularly Life, who has been the one who has had the most success with it, um, have been throwing out there is some just very early Ling pressure. And as we saw there, if you can capitalize on that short period of time where a Terran player only really has a couple of... Uh, of Marines defending, then you can actually get quite a lot of damage done. Now, Thorzine has tra has uh, traversed across the map with his Hellions. This means that his natural is very much, much exposed right now. One Hellion is here to try and defend that. If he can micro that around nicely, he should be okay. The Hellion's now retreating back across the map to try and get rid of the Lings, but uh, with a Banshee here, and of course with that first Hellion, it looks like, for the most part, Thorzine's economy should be okay. So not too badly done. There you go. Look at that. I love how the new physics engine works. Um, so Zero has been doing a really good job. He's now getting out, uh, getting out more drones. It looks like he will try and take his third base now as well. His spire has also started back inside the main, or just on halfway, or just about halfway done. And it looks as if we will get a just. I don't think he's really going to commit to them too hard, but perhaps a little bit of uh, middle list pressure just out of the map. Maybe we'll probably see six to seven. It sort of depends on how much gas he has at the time. He is building up quite a lot right now, though. So I think we'll probably see six or seven, maybe eight, if he's lucky. Meanwhile, for Thorzane, of course, we did have that uh, the Banshee that was out has finally gotten across to the other side of the map. Despite the fact that this is a two-player map, it is quite a long distance to get to across to your opponent. Now, Thorzane is inside. What kind of damage is he going to get? That's five, six kills, maybe seven if he can jump across quickly to that last drone there. Uh, but, of course, he did get to see that the Spire is also in construction, so he will be able to get prepared for defending against that kind of attack, which will soon be coming along as eight muters are now in construction by Zero. He's going to get them out very soon. It looks like the lings that he had are uh, just sort of sitting in the third base here. I'm not sure if they're meant to be uh, tapping away at those rocks, but for the moment, they're not doing anything of the sort. For Thorzane, he's gotten out quite a few Widow Mines at the moment. Only four at the moment, but still, it's uh, it's quite a lot to deal with if you were completely unprepared for them. The muters have now hatched, and they're going to make their way across the map with their prawny uh, seahorse with wings goodness that they do, or whatever. Um, the work account looking good for, well, mostly Thorzane. We've still got Zero sitting down at 46 workers, which is not actually too many, considering uh, the position of the game that we're in. And now, he, Zero does get across to his opponent's side of the map with a couple of those meters. It looks like the Vikings dragging across the meters to actually try and uh, suck them in to get attacked by the two Widow Mines that were prepared, and does take down a couple of them, but there are still six or seven meters, I should say, that are here doing quite a lot of damage. And with this distraction, Thorzane actually accidentally left his front door open and a few lings have gotten inside. It looks like the Muta's still doing a sizable amount of damage here against these units and the lings have gotten their way inside the main mineral line as well. And uh, well, with a decent amount of defense, it looks like Thorzane should be okay, but he has suffered uh, a few losses. Not a massive amount, but a few. And uh, wow, these Widow Mines, these are, have been positioned quite nicely here by Thorzane, and it looks as if uh, he is slowly starting to stabilize. Of course, the only real defense that he has at the moment are these Widow Mines. The thing about them is, with their 40 second cooldown, it is quite a long time before they can shoot at those again, and it looks like a Thor has finally arrived. It looks like the Muters will finally evacuate the base, and you know, with a decent amount of worker kills done, 17 in total, that puts Zero in a relatively good spot. What I would have liked to seen, uh, to have seen behind all of this would perhaps have been an expansion down to the fourth base. He's kept his opponent in there for quite a long time, and it looks like Thorzane is uh, going to take advantage of this Cloak Banshee that he still has across in his opponent's side of the map. Able to get a couple more kills, we're up to 8, 9, maybe 10. If he can target them down, he may hit 11. Yes, he does. In fact, goes to 12, very nicely done. 
and with a last remaining shot, takes down a 12th drone there. So very nicely done by Thor Zane. With that, so he has sort of uh, recovered a few of the losses that he sustained at the hands of those uh, the Lynx and the Mutus that swept through his base. But uh, now he is finally stabilized. He's got a Thor out. We've got quite a few Hellions here as well, along with a few Widow Mines that have been positioned relatively well at the front door here. So the Mutus are going to have to try and make their way through the back. Of course, one big issue they're going to come across is uh, they were, well, okay, they've actually moved. I was going to say there were a couple of Widow Mines inside the main, but they have moved around. It looks like the, the factories are having a little bit of trouble there getting their upgrades done, but uh, for the moment, they're going to have to lift up and move around as uh, we can see a Thor finally coming to the rescue, but unfortunately not in time for that refinery. So, Thor Zane. Uh, having a little bit of trouble just sort of keeping this pressure back, but the good thing is, as we said, he's stabilized, he's got a lot of defense at the front, these mutas, uh, the, sorry, the Widow Mines are here to protect against possible incursions that may come through, and, uh, well, Zero is starting to transition out, he's switched across to two, uh, roaches, we've got some decent creep spreads, to, uh, going through the middle of the map there, and, uh, it looks like he is going to head down and take his fourth base behind some of this pressure, so, things are looking good for Zero at the moment, up at 152 supplies, a little a bit supply blocked right now, but he does have pathogen glands, plus one at two ground weapons and melee, uh, melee weapons, sorry, and ground carapace is just about to complete. Looks like the Muta is getting a little bit, a uh, little bit hungry for tank blood. They actually do to get the tank down, but the, the Widow Mines that are inside the base have actually done a brilliant job, and it looks like with the Overseer here to detect some of these Widow Mines, the uh, Roaches are able to take some of them down, and as we can see, the battle gets large, and it looks like Thor Zane will actually stay in charge with a couple of Thors up at the top of the ramp, able to protect from the high ground there, and the S CVs down on the ground repairing up whatever they can and uh, Thorzane will hold back this attack for the moment which is very nicely done considering the uh, the deficit in the units there but of course he is using mech and of course and as we all will know mech is an extremely versatile and a very efficient sort of army a lot of players when you look at mech you sort of say ah well that's very slow and it's it's sort of you know, it only works when you're in position. Well, that's true, but it's it, in a way, it's a lot like playing as a Protoss in that regard because, you know, you have these very powerful units. You've got all these uh, very strong ways to counter various types of strategies that might come out for a Mazurk player. And, of course, you have to be careful with them, of course, because they are very fragile. If the tanks and Thors just get suddenly surrounded, they're going to go down and then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, just looking at the unit counts, of course, we do have a couple of Hellbats out for Thor Zane at the moment. Just two. He has two Hellions there as well. He's also got four tanks up on the high ground, just protecting this area of his natural. There are also ten Widow Mines widely spaced around the map. I, I do like how, or at least around his side of the map, I do like how he has uh, put them in all sorts of locations here. His upgrade's still looking very good right now. He's currently on 1-2, which is not too bad at all. He also has plus one, uh, plus two, sorry, two vehicle armor on the way, so he is going to get that upgrade done very soon. This of course helps with Thors against Mutas and as against uh, Lings as well. It's really nice to have that upgrade. And uh, now it looks like Thors ain't starting to move through. We've borrowed a couple of mines to get ready for a, uh, a possible counter attack very soon. The, uh, the units for uh, Zero have slightly switched across. We've now got a lot of Lings here of course. Uh, 61 in total. We got a couple of Mutas and 15 Roaches and there we go. The Widow Mines able to provide some good defense against all of those Lings. Unfortunately they were not able to uh, take all of them down and the Thors get surrounded with a couple of in uh, with a couple of investors here to help out with the fungal growth as well. Things looking very good for Zero. He's traded quite nicely there, realistically only losing some of those links. And uh, wow, he's trying to retreat and catch this one widow mine out, but uh, was not able to. But good, good little trade there for uh, Zero. He'll be happy with that. Lost mostly links and uh, a few roaches, but uh, got to take out quite a lot of Thorzane's army. Now Thorzane has been downsized quite far, down to. Uh, He's down to 9 or 10 Hellbats in total. We'll, we'll call both of these the Hellbats, alright? Let's just stick with that motto for now. He's uh, still on 4 tanks, so he's been able to keep that alive for the moment. And now with a 4th base coming up, Thorzane is going to look to try and uh, get his production going up quite a lot higher. And we'll see if he is able to uh, just sort of recover and re-establish his position. Because waiting outside, Zero is now ticking up. He's got all of this, uh, this late game tech up and running. We've got Vipers here, of course, with their consume of able to get their energy back from uh, from dealing damage to their own buildings. We've got Abduct. We've also got Blinding Cloud, which is a fantastic skill to use against a uh, against a mecking player. He's also now got these Ultras in here for 
two on their upgrades. There is also a Broodlord or two? Uh, just one at the moment, I think. Broodlord up in the air. No upgrades for them. And it looks like Zero is going to attack in here. Unfortunately, his Ultral is completely out of position there. Just stuck behind some roaches and in the crevice at that cliff there. But with some blinding cloud, with, uh, with some decent maneuvering from those roaches, he's able to eventually get inside and get some damage done. But the Widow Mines are a big factor here. They've been doing so much damage, taking out a lot of the roaches, taking down some of the, even getting a, a decent amount of damage on this Ultralist as well. And uh, with a couple of extra Ultralists that have popped in, it looks like Zero will be able to finally get inside and get some damage done, but not not without losing some of these Ultras. I mean, he's, uh, he's done all right, but I mean, he's now just waiting for a resupply. And uh, this last Ultralisk is going to try and do what he can. Look at that. Look at that. This SCV just bouncing all over the place. That is absolutely awesome to watch. Um, but here we go. It looks like the the secondary push is now coming through from Zero. He's got a couple of links and they're now trying to make their way inside. Unable to get too far. Blocked at the door by a Thor Bouncer and a Tank Bouncer right at the front. And Thorzane is going to just sort of sit here for the moment. But we do see that trademark Startail Zerg pressure. That is uh, seemingly just the way that all of these guys play. Just really just continuing on the pressure, like watching Bomber play in his uh, in his Terran games. And it looks like Thorzane is going to have a little bit of trouble defending this fourth base. He does have his, uh, his plus three on his uh, vehicle weapons upgrade done, which is always quite good. And he is forced to drop down these Vikings. No more Broodlords up in the air. Drops down the Vikings like in the Heart of the Swarm intro cinematic. And they actually get rid of one of the Ultras. And now with the second one on the way, they get rid of that one too. So very nicely done by that. The the unfortunate issue for Thorzane here at the moment is is that uh, this fourth base has been out of operation for a short time now. But Zero, what has he got back home? Well, his tech is, uh, as we said before, has come along quite nicely. We're still waiting on upgrades to air, but uh, he's just a little bit busy at the moment getting his, uh, his, uh, his attacking boots on and attacking into that fourth base. The Planetary doing a valiant job. 46, 48 kills in total, but eventually it does go down and uh, the Ultras and the Links now on the ground here will have to evacuate because there are a couple of Thors on the high ground firing away at them. So Thorzane still just struggling to get his fourth base in operation. Meanwhile for Zero, he's got his fifth up the top side here. I would love to see him actually grab a sixth as well. He's just got so much map dominance right now. You would really like to see him just sort of take advantage of the fact that he is keeping Thorzane in his base. He's keeping Thorzane to a relatively low amount of units. And as we can see, he's now going to pressure inside this third as well. And with the tank, well, just a couple of tanks on the high ground, a couple of these... Uh, the Widow Mines able to add their effective damage as well. Able to, to blast apart quite a lot of the Ultras. And as you can see, they get torn apart by some of the Widow Mines. And the last Ultralisk is now knocking on the door. In fact, I'm sorry, there's one more. Uh, and the Vikings are yet again down on the ground. Able to take care of one of the Ultralisks. That's something you don't see every day. And uh, there we go. Again, Thorzane is just able to hold. The problem is his army is constantly, constantly being destroyed just like the main components of his army the uh, the power units of course those tanks the thors uh, just being obliterated in every attack the thing is that zero is just sending so many units across the map the uh, you know we're sort of waiting to see if he's going to perhaps try and just death ball it up and maybe go for a final push with a lot of ultras and uh, you know add in some lings and that kind of thing as well but he's just sort of just continuing to stream the units across and i would love to sort him just just uh, love to see him sorry just for a second Maybe just steady up for a moment, maybe get uh, a big clump of units together, and then he can finally attack in and get this uh, get this game sealed. But, uh, you know, he's getting his economy re-established up here at the top base. We're up to 81 drones in total. Thorzane down to 49 SCVs. And uh, as we can see, the Ultra Count is going to try and climb that up a little bit again. And now we've got Corruptors being added to the mix. So he's going to bring in some Broodlords instead. Uh, perhaps it being the main force of what he's trying to uh, send at Thorzane right now. But Thorzane, not to give up yet, started the Raven production. Ravens are a really, really nice little addition to a mech army. Of course, helping out with detection against uh, you know any any units that may be borrowed. Not to mention also in, also enabling you to deal with creep spread on the map. And now look at these mines. This is something I have not really seen too much in uh, in Terran play. Is people using mines to this uh, 
very spread sort of effect. You don't want to do what a lot of people do, which is just clump them all up together in, in one sort of little bunch. If you can spread them out and make a minefield, as it were, then you can actually, uh, their damage will be utilized a lot better than it would if they were all clumped up. So, really nice to see that Thorzane is just spreading things out. Nicely positioned, nice tactics there from him, which is always a key feature of playing as a, as a mech player in, in uh, uh, as a Terran race, I should say. So, it's, uh, you know, it's quite a lot about being efficient, being very slow and methodical with your movements, and just being prepared for everything. So right now, Thorzane, does he know about these Broodlords? I think he does. He should know about those that they're coming. Is producing four Vikings at a time. He's got plus two on his ship weapons on the way. And the first couple of Broodlords now firing down, throwing down the Broodlings to try and do what they can. And uh, the Widowmites adding in a brilliant, uh, a brilliant effect. They're able to take down quite a lot of those, uh, of the Corruptors. And now we can see that with the Broodlords firing away at the Thors and the tanks here, the Vikings are able to uh, take down the last remaining few Broodlords, but the Widow Mines, the Thors, and the tanks that are still alive are able to hold back this force of zero. And we can see that yet again, Thorzane is able to steady himself. He's uh, lost a few units. We still see him down at five tanks, which, you know, at this point of the game, we're at the 28 minute mark. That's not actually like the biggest sort of force of tanks that you would see. And, uh, you know, the thing is, zero, he is still only on five bases. As I said, I'd love to see him uh, jump up to six bases, maybe even seven at this point, you know, because the thing with Mech, you put down a base here, you put down a base here, maybe he kills this one, but then you know that he's going to be close to taking this one out. So you have to be, uh, you know, you have to perhaps take a few more risks when you're looking at a Mech player like Thorzane. He's always going to be brilliant with his defense at his uh, positioning and uh, just his general slow, methodical, tactical play. And I think to uh, to sort of take this long to get a six base up is, is uh, perhaps a little bit of a thorn in the side of Zero. And we'll see if that comes back to bite him later on because looking at his uh, his income right now, still at 86 drones, a maybe a tiny bit higher than what you would want to be. But uh, the minerals at the, the third, the main, the natural, and also the fourth. Well, the fourth is looking not too bad. But uh, of course, three of the bases are now not mining at all. His... Uh, his fifth up the top, still looking good, of course. The fourth, looking fine as well. And the sixth has only just gotten started, so... Things will be uh, will be quite all right for Zero at the moment, but the thing you got to be scared about is Thorzine is now up to a total of five Thors. We've got ten Vikings in the air, three Ravens as well. Not to mention the fourteen Hellbats on the ground that will be able to add their uh, anti-light damage in there. Not to mention the fact that they can tank against some of the uh, some of those uh, the old. Um, Ultralist, that's what the word I was looking for. And it looks like Thorzane is going to go for a drop. He's now, for you know, perhaps one of the first times, he's going to start getting his own real uh, sort of pressure out on the map. And uh, he will... Will he be able to get some damage done? He's going to put a scan down just to see uh, what's going on around this base. But he is going to... Is he going to drop in there? I don't think he's going to... Oh, yes, he is. He is going to drop down here at this six base. If he can get in there, there is absolutely no protection at all because most of the units are now in the middle of the map. We've got a few Ultras, some, some Infestors there as well. Corruptors are also here. And Thorzane may be able to get in here and just do an insane amount of damage with these Hellbats. If he can drop them off, go Thorzane, go! There he is, all right. Drops them in there. He's going to get them right on top of all those workers and burns half of them down. A lot of them on very red health right now. And uh, that, well, you know, that did a decent amount of damage it actually took uh it took zero down to 79 workers of course you know when you consider that uh, our zerg player was actually on 86 or something like that at one point that's uh that's quite a lot uh that he has to burn down before he actually makes a decent dent in the economy but he is going to go for another drop down here at that base get some more done uh, a fungal getting thrown off uh, at a random point there i'm not sure what that was all about but this is also cover for a drop at the fifth base he's now getting inside here a double drop of hellbats Look at that, reduces the, the work account of Zero down to 47 after being up at 86 a moment ago. And despite the fact that these guys are probably not going to survive for too long, uh, Thorzane, in fact, wow, he actually gets away with that. Are you kidding me? He uh, gets away with some of these and he's going to drop them off here at the third base as well. Not too much left here to mine, but if he can get the workers, that is definitely something he's going to be happy with. And gets a couple of them before they are able to retreat. It also looks like this queen is going to go down... There she goes. All right, so gets the queen. Going to get the old uh, ignite afterburners going. Not too much to do inside the, the natural base, though. So uh, not really anything that he's going to accomplish there. But he does get across to the fifth base yet again. Will he be able to get out of there? Sneaks away from that infester. 
both the infestors are actually just letting that go by because they only have a tiny bit of energy left over. But uh, still, Thorze just really starting to uh, try and assert himself on this game here. If he can perhaps get a couple more drone kills going at some of these outlying bases of zero, then we can really consider that Thorze is in a good spot in this map. He's now got five ravens out, a decent fleet of Vikings here, numbering, uh, what's that, that's around about 13 or so. Uh, yes, it is 13, and so he's going to have, you know, really good counters to the anti, uh, to the air forces of Zero if he tries to push. And now, of course, with the tanks, uh, the tanks and of, and those additional Thors now adding in their damage. Of course, they're going to be doing so much. Of course, they will be adding in a heap when they are dealing their anti uh, ultralisk. Uh, uh, sort of uh, damage out there. The question is, will he be able to deal with 17 Ultralists out on the map? These guys have 5-3. There are also 6 Infestors out there. Looks like we are going for a double-pronged attack on this base of Thorzain here. Really, he's not totally prepared, but he does have his forces very close by. The rest of the units now getting attacked here at the, uh, just outside what is the natural base, but the Thors all clumped up here. Will they be repaired? There are no SCVs being added in, and the Ultras go to town all over the uh, the Thors and every single Thor has been destroyed, but a couple of Hunter Seeker missiles getting prepared Burst down some of those Ultras not taking all of them out But does a decent job either way and it looks like uh, with a couple of big attacks through the center of the map here Thorzane is gonna be in a bit of trouble. He's down to 131 supply slowly losing some of these uh, So losing some of the tanks there and uh, it looks like the fourth base has been eradicated as well So zero even with a drone in this army here. That's how uh, dedicated to this attack He is he did lose a lot of his ultras and he is going to resupply on Zerglings I'm not sure how I feel about a Zergling resupply This is perhaps something that is a little bit risky right now because of course it's all the Terran has to do is get a few Hellbats out and you can just absolutely mash up hard Zerglings. So a little bit worried about that. Another couple of Hunter Seekers from Thorze now blasting out there, getting a decent amount of damage done, uh, almost killing off two of those, uh, two of the Ultras here. But the Vikings not able to deal with all of these links that have popped out. And finally, some Blue Flame Hellions arrive, tanks down on the low ground as well. Sieging up and doing a, a decent job, but unfortunately these Ultras are just so tanky. There are six of them here, five of them now. They've finally been uh, downsized a little bit. And with some uh, Widowmite support, I think that Thorze should be okay. I mean, there are three tanks here. The tanks have 3-3, three, three, and in their normal Pong Pong mode, they do a decent amount of damage as well. And, uh, well, the last Ultralisk on 9 health is still alive right here. And Thorzain, well... Wow, look at that. The trading going on between these Widowmines. 13 kills, 4, 11, 4 on this one as well. He's been doing a... Uh, I... It's kind of hard to call the position of this right now because Zero has his his economy hasn't been flourishing right now. Like you look at it, there's a lot of drones here, but no gas coming in. He actually has no gas right now. Finally, we get some more drones up here at this fifth base, and of course, keep in mind that the fourth is almost dried out right now. So he's going to be struggling struggling for gas just a little bit here. So that's why we do see him switch into a very high zergling count. And it looks like uh, that's the thing about these zerglings is they don't trade very efficiently at this stage of the game. You've got the hell bats out there with their 3-3. Three, three. You've got, uh, of course, the odd Hunter Seeker missile, which jumps out and does a ridiculous amount of damage against Lings and that kind of thing. But, you know, we look at Thorzane's economy. He's now got, uh, well, no natural, no main, no third. He does have this fourth, which is just barely mining. There's only a few more minerals left over. And with mules constantly picking away at that, Thorzane is going to have a lot of trouble uh, if he wants to try and continue on. But, but, you know, as we said before, he's being very efficient. He's one big part of that. And it looks like being efficient enough with his Hellions is good enough for him. Takes down a lot of the workers here at that base. We've had almost 100 worker kills each way. This game is absolutely incredible. 80 worker kills to 95 and Thorzane, that may help him out quite a bit because his economy, as we said, is uh, starting to look a little bit shaky for Zero. He's having trouble bringing gas in. Thorzane himself is having trouble with his own uh, resources coming through, but now we can see a couple of Hunter Seekers going down on those Infestors, and those are Infestors that you cannot lose if he was at Startail Zero right now. He has no gas. Look at this. He has, like, no gas to use. We do have a couple of Infestors on the 
way along with 18 links, but what is that going to do? That is not going to do anything against this sort of army. The uh, the Hunter Seekers that we mentioned before, the Widow Mines down on the ground, and more and more Widow Mines constantly being produced by Thorzane. He's content to sit here and turtle. He, and you know why? Because it's going to work. If he can continue just to get the odd pick off of some of these workers here at these, uh, these outlying bases, then he's going to be fine. He may be able to even start pushing at some point. If he can take some of these Widow Mines, maybe move the tank slowly up and establish this uh, the fifth base up to the top, then he may be able to really get himself in a dominant position here. He just needs to be extremely careful and extremely slow about it. What I don't want to see is him just just suddenly unsiege and unburrow everything and just uh, walk up here to this base because it's not going to happen there. And uh, as we can see, he's forced to lift up the command center for now. So the, the scary part about what Zero is doing, he's up at 178 supply, he's got a lot of links as we can see, 137 on the map, but he's spread them out. He's sort of spread these forces out. There is a possible run by through this location here. He can also just uh, absolutely sandwich this location and it looks as if that is what he's going to try and do with the Widow Mines doing an insane amount of damage to those links. The tanks are covered. Banshees up in the sky. Two of them cloaked and they are able to just remove every single unit. There are a couple of Hunter Seekers now coming out for Thorzay. These should be able to deal with those Ultras. Bam! The last few go down. There is one lumbering its way inside the main base but I don't know what that is going to do and uh, it looks like Zero is uh, he's starting to have a little bit of trouble with this with all these Widow Mines out what is he going to do against that I mean you can sacrifice Lings against these but eventually the Lings are just going to die to all those Widow Mines and uh, with no real gas coming in to try and help him out with re-establishing his army Thorzane has now taken this fifth base down to the bottom left hand side and has, and has got an absolute plethora of mules down there mining it looks like Thorzane is actually getting himself into this game, into a position where he possibly can win this. The Ultra comes through and actually takes the Hunter Seeker missile to the face. It looks like a few Widow Mines actually made their way across to the fifth base of Zero and are now just destroying every single worker that he has. He is now down to a total of 34. Thorzane has no workers right now, no SCVs for Thorzane. He is able to produce them, but at the moment he doesn't actually need to. He can just he can just continue to bring out some Hellbats, he can produce mines as well, and I really love the fact that he is just uh, playing a very turtle style here. He says, you know what? I have no economy, but neither do you, and you can't do anything about it. Looks like this orbital command is going to go down. I don't think that can be saved. Nope, it does not. It is not able to be saved. The Widow Mines here still doing a huge amount of damage, and uh, an Infester, wondering what's going on, pokes its head over here, and is, that, is probably going to get a missile in the face in just a second, uh, but we'll see if it is able to. The, mi the mules have now been, uh, have expired, and this base is still looking good if, if Thor's can get up there but he what he's doing at the moment is getting this the fourth base down and uh, getting the gas coming in which is what he would really like to have right now because at the moment we're still sitting here with only a few tanks there's only uh, there's only three tanks out he has eight ravens which is a nice amount but of course he does have the 20 widow mines out on the map maybe some some a little bit more spreading on these would be fantastic so that he can use them efficiently against these links and a planetary fortress is going to be the last remaining defense here for Thorzane against this huge Huge amount of links sweeping through three three upgrades. They do they not have Kraken? Wait, hang on, let me check. They do not have adrenal glands. What are you doing, Zero? Anyway, I uh, I didn't notice that before, but as we can see, these widow mines, these are still here. They have got a huge amount of damage. 18 kills, 15 kills. These guys are captains. You have to salute a widow mine if you're in Thorzane's army right now. And as we can see, he's just continuing to stop the mining of this base. It looks like he'll need to get something done over on the left-hand side here as well. But I think the Banshee party is on the way to try and deal with that. And given that there is basically no air defense here at this side base, I am not sure what Zero is going to do right now. Thorzane slowly creeping up in the supply count. Up to 121 right now. His, uh, it looks as if the Widow Mines are finally being cleaned up. It looks like a couple of queens had to deal with that. That's how uh, desperate in this situation at the moment zero is and it looks like the last few links gonna try and come across to save this base but the drones are evacuated because there is absolutely nothing they can do the the links do not have their evolution to uh, jump up into the air like they can in heart of the swarm single player and the banshees taking care of that hatchery and that could be it because a couple more banshees now at the top side of the map and Terran Imba comes out of zero <laughs> he knows that things are extremely grim for him right now he has no money coming in no gas coming in no detection here 
at this base and uh, with an Overseer going to take a few seconds to actually come in. It looks like uh, Dorze may be able to finish off this game in uh, what what is one of the most interesting, slow-paced but very action-packed games I have ever seen, at least in Heart of the Swarm. Um, I think we are going to see a final victory here from our Terran from Team EG coming across to this base here, switching into the Hellbat mode, of course, adding in their extra little bit of damage against Light. This base across to the side is also under threat. Just a couple of Infested Terrans here, not really going to do too much. And now with the Hellbat surrounding the Queens, able to do a ridiculous amount of damage. The Queens trying to transfuse to save the day, but that is not going to happen. And Thorzane is just going to march through into this base. These drones are not going to last too long at all. Zero trying to get them out of there, but it is just too little too late. His work account now reduced to 20 Seven. Despite the fact that Thorzane is also on a measly 16 workers, this game is going to go the way of Thorzane in just a moment. With the hatchery going down, with no more mining here, and no more ability to build another hatchery, and uh, the only real force that, I, that hilariously that Zero has up, up uh, to defend against Thorzane are these Corruptors. Uh, that is going to be it. A little bit of micro there from the old T-Funk, and he is able to uh, win this game, it looks like. The Corruptor's coming across, trying to get some damage done, and there is the G from Zero. So our Star Tail Zerg not able to uh, to bust through those robust defenses of Thorzane, just sitting down here, camping out with a lot of these Widow Mines. We saw 20 at one point. How many is, that, is it at now? It's at 18 right now, but we saw 20 Widow Mines widely spursed around the front of his base, and that helped him to turtle along and just hold that game against this, uh, this strong Zerg player. And uh, with some uh, beautiful, as we said, out, outside uh, attacks on the, the extra bases, he was able to do, destroy the economy of Zero and thus give himself the win. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game. That was a very cool, a very good look at uh, playing a different kind of mech style, especially in Heart of the Swarm, of course, adding in these Hellbats and those Widow Mines. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe and uh, have a look at some of the other videos. And uh, you can also send me your own replays. As I said, if you've got your own long games, I love casting long games. They're very, very interesting to see. Anyway, we will we'll catch you all next time. Slowly but surely crept up. He's up to six carriers right now and looking very good with that. We'll see how he goes in this battle. Unfortunately, a couple of the carriers haven't actually gotten all of their interceptors out. 